Hi and welcome. This lesson we're going to look at how to create a tic-tac-toe game. So we're just going to set up the board and set up the pieces to go on the board. So we're going to do this from absolute scratch and get you guys learning Godot and just kind of playing around with it. So the first thing you need to know is that Godot will be in your start menu if you're on a, on a Windows machine. You just click on it, it's the icon that looks like this. From our classroom projects, you should have the assets already downloaded and unzipped. So make sure you do that and make sure you put it in an appropriate folder so your computing folder will be absolutely fine. Inside the assets, you'll find all the background, the grid and the noughts and crosses plus a selectable piece. So these are just graphics ready to go into our game. So let's go into Godot and let's just set this up. So this is Godot. This is the first thing that you're going to get. So from scratch, we can just cancel this out and we can start a new project. So the new project we're going to do is just say new project and we're going to call it tic-tac-toe. And you'll notice straight away, you can't do anything here. It says, look, you can't save your file here. So you will need to go into browse and then you're going to need to find the most appropriate place. Now, if you're on a network system, you're going to have to look in this area first. And if you click on it, you should see a C drive. Now, if it's networked, C drive doesn't always work. Um, in, our, in our school, it's the N you want. So if you select the N from here, and you can start then. So I'm just going to select this root directory because that's absolutely fine for my home system. But you guys will need to probably select the N or the C. But if you're on a network drive, which you are, we are at school, you're going to need to select the M. So from here, I'm just going to save mine on my desktop. I would suggest you save yours in your computing folder and even maybe create a new folder called game projects or something like that. So here is all of my stuff that I'm ready for. I'm going to create a new folder just for this game. So we're going to say create new folder and we're going to call it tick tack toe and we're going to press OK. So we now have the folder and I'm just going to do that one more time. So you have to do it three times in total. Tick tack toe. Um, now we've got everything. We've got the folder set up and we can just select current folder. You'll see now that I've got this green cross and we are ready to go. So I'm just going to press the pause button and you guys can go ahead and set that up. So, welcome back. That took me a little bit longer because my screen went all whacked, it went a bit big. But this is the first thing that you should see. You get this big 3D window. And it's the first thing you should know is actual fact, Godot is one of the very first engines that allows you to work in scripts views, in 3D views, and 2D views. And these components, although they, they gel very well together, they are completely different and they are standalone objects. Godot, when it started in the day, was a 2D engine, and the 3D engine got built afterwards as a separate thing. So unlike a lot of these game engines like Unity, it's actually a separate thing. It works like a separate thing. It's a fantastic engine and it's meant for the job, which is great. So we can quickly switch to our 2D view and we are gonna make a 2D game. Now, you've got a middle mouse button. If you press down, you can do a little panning around. If you scroll your mouse button in and out, you can zoom the board in or you can zoom the board out, depending on which way you wanna go. Um, or if you don't have your middle mouse button to kind of do that, which I don't hear, um, you can just press these plus and minuses and that will zoom in. This area here is your canvas. This is what we're going to be working on. The actual canvas size is 1024 wide by 600 high. We won't go too much into the configuration because the standalone one will just do the job, okay? So on this left hand side, we have our kind of assets palette, if you like. So let's go over to our folder icon, and here it is again. And you'll see that I've just created this tic-tac-toe game, and it's completely empty. It's just got all my projects set up. And all I want to do, is, and this is the same if you're on a Windows machine or a Macintosh machine, um, you just right-click on this Assets Free folder that you've downloaded from the classroom, and you say Copy. Now you paste that into your tic-tac-toe, <laughs> into your tic-tac-toe project. And it happens here. Now, the good thing about this area here, this kind of assets panel and this folder, is they are completely in sync with each other. So you can edit an image and it will update in Godot just like that. It's really, really fantastic. So let me show you that right now. So I'm going to click on Godot and you're going to notice that that assets folder appears. So here we go. 
the assets folder is there and when I click on it guess what all the assets are ready to go if I click the back button which was that one there I get back to here what now we need two more folders we need a scenes folder so I did that just by right clicking in this area and going new folder and the other one we need is a scripts folder press OK now let's pause the video again and you guys set up those folders import your assets and get go dot looking exactly the same as what mine does so now we're back we're going to just start putting all of the elements on the stage now over on this right hand window we have our node tree now this is how Godot works it works from a series of nodes nodes are just classes of code that can be used so it cuts down on a lot of the work a lot of the effort and underneath you have this inspector and this node and these are the properties for those nodes that you create so every scene needs a root node so this is going to be our main game scene. So we're just going to create um, a 2D node or node 2D. So if you just start typing in the search engine node 2D and then double click, it will appear. So we have it a node 2D here. And I'm just going to rename it because this is going to be the name of our scene. So right click and we're just going to call it game. Okay. Now we've got the game scene. You can come over to the left hand side and you can say save scene okay now we do need to make sure that we put it into our scenes folder and then we press save so let's pause the video again and you guys go ahead and create up to this point okay so let's carry on we need more nodes so the next node that we need is a sprite now it works in a hierarchy so anything that gets indented belongs to this node so the first thing you need to do is just select the top node and then when you add a new node using the plus button it will get added to this tree so add the node and the one we want is called a sprite and it's basically just an image you do have to be careful because there are 3d sprites and there are 2d sprites so generally this kind of purpley blue color tends to be the the 2d stuff okay so if we just click on the one that says sprite and we get this sprite here now we need to populate it with a texture but let's give it a name first so the name we're going to call it is background so we have a background it's a tech it's a sprite and where it says null this is where we're going to put our um, asset of background so we have this BG <coughs> and all you do is you click on it you drag it and you drop it right there where it says null be careful sometimes it wiggles and it goes into the normal map you don't want it in the normal map you want it in the texture mode now it's kind of put itself in the center so all we need to do is click on the offset and untick center and it puts itself perfectly exactly where we want it so once again pause the video and you guys do that okay on to the next bit so from the game menu we are now going to create the grid so we just need another sprite and we're going to from the recents panel anything you've used before will populate itself in the recents panel which is absolutely great so you can just double click on the word sprite and it goes here now let's just rename that to grid okay now from now on I'm just going to go straight through so if you want to pause the video to kind of catch up please do that and I thoroughly recommend that kind of as things get too far ahead you just pause the video and you carry on so say me keep putting pause points in let's just carry on like this so you pause the video as you need to okay just one or two tasks at a time so we have this grid and we're just going to drag the grid from here now if you can't see it if we got all our folders here and it's in this assets 1.3 folder and we're just going to drag it in make sure it goes on the texture and there we go and for this one I'm just going to drag it into place I'm not going to be too particular about where it sits you can snap this stuff but at this particular moment I'm not too worried what I do want to do is save it though so let's go back to our scene and then I want to test it just to make sure there's no kind of errors and just to make sure that everything is working exactly the way we want it to so I press the play button and then it says uh oh you don't have a main scene so what we need to do is press the select button and then if, if you don't see your scenes panel come here click on the scenes panel so I just I use the up arrow 
and then select the game menu because this is going to be our main scene and then press open. So from now on, Godot will know that this is your main scene. Okay, and as you can see, nothing's really happening here, but it does work and it works perfectly. So go ahead and test your scene, make sure it's working and make sure you're happy. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create another scene. So the next scene is going to house all of our kind of noughts and crosses, if you like. And it's going to be done on one scene and then we're going to duplicate it and link it to this scene. I'll show you how to do that. So scene, new scene. And we need to add a new node. So the node we need this time is an Area 2D. Now the Area 2D gives us some code um, or it gives us the foundation for the code to be able to select what we need to do. So the one we want is the Area 2D, which is this one here. It's not in here yet because we haven't used it. So double click. Now I'm just going to give this the name of POS. And it basically just means positioning of the piece or position. Okay, so we have this first one here. Now, the next bit we need to do is add another sprite. And we're just going to have this kind of a mouse over sprite, okay? So make sure it's selected, then click again, and then let's add a sprite. We can call this mouse over. And this is going to be very important what you call this because when we do our scripting, we're going to refer back to this name. So let's call it mouse over. And that should do the job. Now let's save our scene just in case we lose all our work. So save scene. And it's going to say, well, what do you want to call it? Now I want to call it um, selectable area. So now we're not actually going to be using this apart from linking it to our scene. So it doesn't overly matter what you call this. But for, my, for keeping it consistent with what I'm doing, just call it selectable area. OK, and we make sure we spell that right. <laughs> and press save. OK, so back to the mouse over. Now let's give it a texture. The texture we want is this mouse over. So let's just drag the texture onto there. Fantastic. What I do want to do, um, because there's going to be multiple things on this selectable area, what I do want to do is select the POS, and then I want to lock all the elements to it. OK, so using this button here, you're just going to be able to lock it. So when I move it like so, it's going to be okay, although I don't want to move it just yet. So Control or Command Z just to undo that. Cancel. Now, why didn't that work? There we go. Command Z. So the next bit that we need is a collision area. So let's add another one because when you click on it, you, you need to be able to collide with something so it knows that it's coming in or out of view. So make sure this is selected. Press the plus button and type the word collision. OK, so the one we want is Collision Shape 2D. So this one will do just fine for this. There's loads of different collisions that you can use with, with all kinds of physics, which is great. But this Collision Shape 2D would just be absolutely fine for us. It'll have all the built-in classes that we need. So we have that. It's giving us a warning here, basically saying there's no shape. So let's go into here and let's give it a round circle shape. You'll notice that the actual collision area is way, way, way too small. Now this gets a bit fiddly here because what you need to do is click on this drop down arrow and then come down to edit and then resize it. So the radius is obviously 10 pixels at the moment, it's quite small. And let's try 70 pixels, it's ever so slightly too big. Let's try 65 pixels. Now the collision area is perfect, so we'll leave it at that, we're happy with that. And I believe, oh no, we need one more. We need a placeholder for our noughts and crosses. So let's get another sprite. And let's call this one x underscore o. Now that is an o, not a zero. So noughts and crosses, um, crosses and o's even. Um, so just make sure you've got that. And it's going to be a blank sprite. So we could add a texture, but we're going to use our code to actually put that into place. So if I just zoom back in and just move, move this over, that's it, just so it's playable. And let's save our scene to make sure we're good. Now we've got our scene saved. You can, if you don't want to play the initial scene, because if we press the play button now, it's just going to play the grid. It's not actually going to play what we've just created. So if we press the play button here, 
it will play the, the initial scene. Now, as you can see, nothing happens, but we do have this O and it's ready to go, which <laughs> this O and it's ready to go. So let's close this out. And now we're going to need to add a script. So we're going to add it to our positioning element just by pressing this plus here. If you ha if you're behind and you're getting struggle, just pause the video now, do the pieces and then and then carry on. OK, because this bit goes quite quite far into it and we're just going to do a little script we're going to do it in under 40 lines of code we're going to have a completely programmable um, noughts and crosses game or tic-tac-toe game so make sure you've got this POS selected and then press the GD script button and then it's going to say where do you want to create the script now we don't want to create it here because it's going into our scenes folder we do want it to be called a selectable area so click on the folder icon and let's put it into our scripts folder so selectable error is in our scripts folder and we press save and we press create. Now what that's done is it's pinged us over to this template file if you like. So it's already done it for us. It's attached it to here. So you can see this icon here is basically saying you have a script attached to it. And because it's attached to this root element, it can pass through all of these elements quite well. If you want to go back to your main scene, you can. So you can see they're all completely linked in. Now, let's just start by deleting everything we have here. And let's start by adding our variables. So the first thing we need to do is when the scene loads, we need to make sure our variables are preloaded in the background, ready to go. So we need this extends 2D because this is what this note is. Called, it is and, it, and it requires that to kind of import a lot of the functionality. So we can go on ready. Add a variable, and the first variable we want is for the X, and we want to preload an image. And this image is going to go into that placeholder of X underscore O. Okay, so we're going to say preload, and then it's going to be calling up some kind of function. And inside of the function, you want to call up the image itself. So it's the X we want, which is this one here. So if you right click and copy path. And we're just going to paste the path in here. So control V to paste it in. Now it is a string. So you do need your speech marks. So let's just add our speech marks there. And then the next one that we want is on ready and we want the O variable. And this would just allow us to kind of call at will um, the two images that we need. So make sure you use the O, not the zero. And then we're going to preload it. So as soon as the scene loads, it's going to load this. Now the O that we want is this one here, not the mouse over. So we're going to say copy path. And we're going to paste it in there. Now if I'm going too fast for you, remember you can stop. Um, pause the video and you can catch up. So the last variable that we need is a selectable. So for instance, if, if a player has already clicked on it, and it's already an X. You don't want that player to be able to click on it again and change it to an O. So we want to be able to select it. So if if selecting is false, which is means it's empty, then you can select it. If it's not, then if it's true, it won't be allowed to be selected. So select TID equals false. And then we are, I deleted the um, ready function, didn't I? So we just need to put back in the ready function um, to load the game. Joink. The next one we need, actually, let's just do, let's just pass that on for a minute. Now, the pass isn't anything. It just, it means that the, the actual code won't break if it uses it. So we just put pass in as a kind of placeholder. Now, I've forgotten the keyword var. Naughty. So here we go. So we have our functions, we're ready to start playing. Now we need to get some mouse overs going. So we're gonna use a couple more functions, but how we're gonna do this ever so slightly different. So if you come over to this element here, and then you come down to nodes, you've got these things called signals, and the signals allow you to use pre-built functions, which are absolutely amazing. Um, it just it basically just writes out the first line of code for you and it and it kind of initializes things. So the ones we want to look at are our, our, our mouse objects. So here's our mouse objects. We have an input um, event, we have a mouse entered event, and we have a mouse exited. So let's start by putting the mouse entered. So when your mouse rolls into the collision, it's going to do something. So double click on it, 
make sure it's selected to pos and then press connect so there it is now let's start another function for when it leaves um, the area so come back to here click on node click on signals and click on exited double click press connect and there we go we've got the first three functions all ready to go so <clears throat> let's just have a look at this the first function we need is to hide the the mouse over from from kind of happening until you roll your mouse over so when the when the area is ready we want to start by hiding everything so how you select a node you use the dollar sign and it you can select anything from this tree here okay so we're just going to use the dollar sign and we're going to say which node do we want to select and what do we want to do with it so dollar sign mouse over is the node we want to select and the function to make it do something is a built-in function called hide um, so straight away you've got mouse over hide it okay so if I run this now hopefully you should see that it's not there and because I've not told it to do anything when I roll the mouse in it's not going to ever turn up it's just going to be completely not there which is fine so let's move on so we can use these functions now to do exactly the same thing so when mouse entered we want it to show so let's just add that so I'm just copying that and I can get rid of this pass because the pass is just to make sure the function doesn't break and because it's entered we want it to show okay so let's see how that works let's just save this scene because we're doing loads and loads of good work so press save <laughs> rolled straight into it and showed it let's do it one more time keep my mouse out of the way this time right, there we go and roll over and voila it's done um, now but it stays selected so we do need this next one that says mouse exited so when the mouse leaves the area do something else so nice and easy we're just gonna hide it again so run it again and let's see what happens so show hide show Hide, show, hide, show, hide. Anyway, so we've got the first part of this, this working now. So we do need to do one more input method. And that is basically, if we click the mouse, we want it to do something. So let's come back to this POS and let's use another signal. Surprise, surprise, it's inside of this mouse area. So we've used entered, we've used exited. The next one is if you click on the mouse, do something. So double click on this one, make sure it's connected to POS and then press connected. So here it is here. Now, what do you want it to do? So we're going to have to use an if statement now, and we're going to have to say, right, when you click on the left mouse button, do something, and if you click on the right mouse button, do something else. So let's get rid of this, and let's say if, and inside of those brackets, we want to say event, because it's the event handler that we are using. So if event is input, and it should, if you, start typing actually it should give you all the ones we want here so if the event is mouse button that's the one we want look so input mouse button and this is also correct so it's kind of I've just started typing input and it started giving me the answer now the one that I want is um, mouse button so double click ah, and it does that sometimes you have to click once let me do that again so you have to click once so go to the one you want and then it moves so then you have to click again so now you can click twice it yeah I think that's a bug but there you are so if event is input mouse button do something now the problem is is it still doesn't know what to do so what mouse button do you want so if again so nested if statement and then you want to say event and oh I wonder if we can get if event is uh, it's not going to give it to me this time it's just button if event dot button underscore index there it is um, and then we want to say is equal to button left now these buttons are assigned in the key mapping so you can change any of these mappings that you want but obviously for this this is what you want really so if event is button left do something what do you want it to do so what I want it to do is actually I want it to show I want it to show 
the X or I want it to show the O. Okay. Now we're going to put this into a function. So let me just write the function first. So I'm just going to play underscore X and then call up the function. And then up here we're going to create a function called what do you think we're going to call the function? Play underscore X. And it does matter if it's uppercase or lowercase. Now all we want to do is call up um, call up the texture over something. So the one we want to change is this. So if the mouse button is pressed and it goes to this function, we want to say, right, put the X image into this node. Okay. So how we do that is dollar sign because we're calling up a node and then it's X O because that's the node name dot set. And let's just see if the one we want there is set texture. Uh, nope, it's not there. Is it there yet? You can also scroll through that list as well, especially if your spelling is as bad as mine. So set texture, and that's a built-in variable as well. So what do we want? Sorry, it's a built-in function. What do we want to call that texture? So the texture is called based on our variable at the top, x, x, x. So let's add the x. And let's see what we got. So let's save it. And hopefully now when we click on the left button, it will show the X. Click. Hey, and there it is. Okay. And it will only do it once because it's obviously still there. I don't think it will disappear if we do anything else. No, nope. that's good. So we could do exactly the same as this for the O. So let's just copy this. Come on, C. Command V, or Control V, and then change it to O. If this is going too fast, remember you can pause pause it. Um, we're already quite long now, we're into 26 minutes, which is quite long, um, but that's fine. So the O won't actually play at the minute. We have to still write the else statement. So the else is in line with the nested if, and you just want to say if another button is pressed, do something else. Now the one we want is play underscore O. Okay, remember it's an O, not a zero, and it's a function, so you need to have the open and close brackets <gasps> and play. So, right mouse, O. Oh. Ah, look, I can change it loads of times. Ah, I can change it. That's not good. So, we don't want that. So, this is where our next function comes, our next variable comes into it. It's this selected is false. So, what we need to do is change that so that make sure if it's already selected you can't use this function and it's very easy it's going to be an if statement that just looks at whether it's already been used so if so um, not selected which is which is true false um, if not selected you can do this we do need to look at the indenting as well because it all belongs to each other just like we do in Python so if not selected do this and let's do the same here. So I'm just going to copy that. Oops, don't forget my colon. If not selected. And let's just indent that to make sure that works. And let's see if that's solved our little problem. Let's save the work because we've done loads and loads of stuff. So run the game again. Now, hover over, click once. Click with my right. Click with my left, click my right, click my right. Ah, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Why doesn't it work? So the reason it doesn't work is because we haven't told it to change selected from false. So if it's false and so not selected basically means if it's false, then you can do whatever you want. So let's say, let's say selected is assigned to true. And let's do the same here. Selected is assigned to true. And notice that it's lowercase, so Python requires the T to be uppercase, whereas GD script requires it to be lowercase. So we've got that. Let's try it again. So let's run it again and let's see if this works. So left mouse, right mouse, left mouse, right mouse. Yay, that's what we've got. Let's just try it on the other one just to make sure the O works as well. Do -do. So right mouse and the O works as well. Good. So the only other thing that I want to do is 
to probably just hide the mouse over once it's selected as well. So let's just hide the mouse over. So let's go dollar sign mouse over dot hide built-in function. So let's use that as well. And let's just copy that because we want to do the same for the O. Copy, paste. Now, I believe that is roughly the end of our code. That is literally all of the lines of code that we need. I don't think there's anything else we need. Let's just check it. So let's save it first. It's always a good option to save. Let's run the code. So when you go into it, it comes, when it goes in, it goes out. Now, normally when I click, this area stays, but when I click now, it should disappear. Okay, and let's just try it with the O as well, make sure that's working. It's a good option to test your, your code. So hover over and it disappears. It does come back, that's not really a problem. When you click on it, it disappears and that's kind of what we want, that, that level of interaction. So that is all of the code you need. So what did we say? Under 40 lines of code, so 35 lines of code. I think that's fairly decent. I don't think there's too much more that we need to do there. So let's link this to our game. So head on over to the game, click on the main scene, and let's very quickly link it. So you've got a link button here. So click on that. And the one we want to link is a scene. And it's this selectable item. So double click. And there's our selectable item. Let's start by putting it here. Now, it's going to be slightly too big. Because if you look at it in the middle, it's going to overlap. So we do need to make it slightly smaller. Now, we want to do this with one object, not lots. So let's go back to our selectable area. Let's click on the POS and let's click on the inspector and let's go down to transforms. And just change its scale ever so slightly to 0 0.8 and 0 0.8 and press enter. Now let's go save it. <laughs> save your work. Let's go back to this game and that's going to be big enough. Now, what Godot does, if you need to duplicate, and we obviously need to duplicate this nine times, is if you put a number in, this is a zero now, not an O. If you put a number in, and then you press Command or Control D, you can actually copy it as many times as you need. So we need it nine times, because it's zero, we only go to eight. And we just finally, so Command D, and we've got all of these here, we just need to reposition. So grab this one, put this on the very last slot, and it doesn't really matter which way they go around. Grab this one, put it on this slot here. Grab this one, put it on this slot here. There. And I'm just being very kind of quick to do this because we're, we're up to 32 minutes now. So I want to kind of finish this off in a few seconds time. So let's just get this in place. Let's test it. And then we'll come back in, a, in another video to kind of put some actions where you can win the game as well. So save your scene. We're all saved. We've got all our, everything we need. That's the whole thing. And we press play and let's just see if it works. So if you press the left mouse, you get an X. If you press the right mouse, you get an O. So straight away, you can see that you can build up quite a nice game of noughts and crosses or tic-tac-toe. So I'll see you in the next one. Until now, have fun.